What are the next sort of form factors? And are we moving toward like gesture recognition off the device anytime soon? Wow. Uh, <laughs> gesture recognition. Yes. I mean, anything's really possible within we consider kind of our constraints that we want to make sure to, to make experiences grow off of already great experiences. There's sometimes we do want to transform things completely. Everybody gets excited about that. A lot of people like their personal computer. And when you bring a new usage like that, you want to make sure you can still do it within the you know, established power envelopes for a mobile class device, or make sure that you're um, not bringing too much cost into the, the, the device itself as well. So people love to see their the evolution of these things, you know, models of user experience or models of how a device might work, but they always want to have a really great product at a good price and be able to do a lot of multifunctional topics like this. Um, there's a lot of new innovation we've seen recently on screen technologies. So if you look at some of the complications of like having radical form factors, the thickness is an issue with the battery itself. So we want to continue to have great battery technology, but it's not like the batteries are doubling in capability uh, every year. So uh, as you do um, the batteries to keep the thickness a certain level where they get located inside the device and in the display itself, you have a lot of constraints that you have to work around. Um, some of our, our partners uh, in the industry or creating things like, you know, just a pure screen that you can fold. Foldable displays is pretty interesting. I think that's just the first part where we're going to see foldable displays uh, make impacts into the form factors themselves. Uh, All-in-ones are awesome. Uh, I have all-in-one at my, my work office in Arizona. Um, I love that it just it's just there, and I have a keyboard and mouse, and everything's just working wonderfully, and I'm not trying to find the box and plug stuff in. It's all in one spot with a great like, built-in dock. Docking technology has been great. Thunderbolt brings some really, really high bandwidth uh, as an interface uh, to connect into docks and then multiple displays continues to evolve. Um, but yeah, innovations continues to happen. It may surprise us of an old device like a PC, but it is uh, continues to happen. Um, so I think what will be really interesting in the coming years is really see how the play of AI happens with the, with the PC. Uh, we're just in the first stages of bringing AI to market with our Meteor Lake project at Intel. And uh, there's other, uh, you know, providers out there as well bringing AI first out with uh, Microsoft bringing in some called Microsoft Effects package. You can see this happening when you do things like a Teams call. Um, but other uh, providers also have are using these AI engines to start to do, you know, clean up and improvements of your uh, media, your, your, your uh, audio, your um, imaging type of content. And then beyond that, we're also looking at how it kind of get, infuses all the things that you experience on the PC and the OS and the software stacks, uh, application developers. Our OEMs are super eager to innovate with these type of new technologies. Possibly that brings in some new ways to look at the user experience itself, how that user experience evolves into modulating that form factor into something that may be you know, novel and interesting. So it's really about what people do. Mm -hmm. you know, but people find extremely value in how do they become as productive as possible or really bring the creator forward. Um, you start to see the evolution start. And AI is going to kickstart that. Once again, we're going to see another big uh, uh, level of innovation kicking with uh, AI.